Halo Infinite is still almost an entire year from releasing, but thankfully, 343 is releasing tons of free new content to MCC for us to play with and unlock. Fortunately, we're approaching the release of the fifth set of new cosmetics, Season 5, and 343 shows no signs of stopping. In fact, they just recently confirmed they plan on releasing up to 10 seasons total, so we'll have plenty more Halo goodness to keep us entertained until Halo Infinite's release in fall next year. But what if I told you that 343 was already starting to tease us with some brand new Halo lore? Halo 5's unlocks have some very, very interesting implications. But enough talk. You have listened. Through rock and metal and time. For those of you that aren't aware, several years back, Saber Interactive, a group of developers that often work quite closely with 343 Industries, began work on a rather bizarre Halo project simply titled Halo Online. Once enough of the game had been built, a closed alpha and beta were released to a small percentage of players in Russia to test out the game. The idea was to create a PC-exclusive, free-to-play, multiplayer Halo game using a heavily modified version of Halo 3's engine. While it mostly resembled Halo 3, it did have a few strange additions to the original game, such as armors and maps. It even had new weapons with additional layers of customization, like skins, sights, and extended mags. Eventually, the project got scrapped, but that didn't stop a dedicated group of modders from getting a hold of the game's code. The modders managed to get the game up and running and released it online for the Halo community to play around with. The population exploded and became a huge hit as it was the first time Halo 3 was available for PC players. Shortly after its success, Microsoft themselves requested the team of modders, known as El Dorito, halt their progress, urging them to not continue to share the game any longer. Though they didn't threaten any legal action, the El Dorito team complied. And just as quickly as Halo Online was born, it died. It seemed that was the end of Halo Online and Halo on PC as a whole. Then 343 did the unthinkable. They announced their plans to begin porting Halo MCC in its entirety, plus reach, to PC. El Dorito's success is what prompted MCC's PC release to begin with. Fast forward a year later and the entire collection is now available for PC and Xbox players, and the fans couldn't be happier. But that wouldn't stop Halo fans from begging 343 to bring Halo Online's maps and armors to MCC, which it appears they are now finally starting to do. As for El Dorito, many of the modders within the group would eventually lend a hand to 343 to help them port the official versions of Halo on PC that you play today. If you didn't know, Halo 3 on MCC just recently received 12 brand new armor sets from Halo Online. So now that you're up to speed on the whole Halo Online situation and where these armor sets are coming from, we can finally get to the meaty lore bits that their inclusion brings. Despite the fact that Halo Online was exclusively multiplayer, many of the new armor sets were given in-universe descriptions and explanations. But like I said, the game was cancelled so the small lore bits within can't really be considered canon. That was until they were added to MCC in preparation for its upcoming Season 5 update. Their inclusion in MCC completely changes their status. These are in-universe descriptions written and added to an actual Halo game, not a cancelled project. So as far as I can tell, these new armor sets are completely new canon, which was what prompted me to make this video in the first place. So let's go ahead and start looking at these descriptions and unpacking what it might mean for Halo Infinite. First of all, these descriptions repeatedly reference a place called Anvil Station. There's a reason that probably sounds unfamiliar to you. That's because this is the first actual canon mention of this particular location. Halo Online was supposed to put you in the shoes of Spartan Force, and there's tons of evidence within the armor set's descriptions to support that. So I think it's safe to assume all of these armor sets are being developed for Spartan Force. I'll point out the evidence that suggests that as we get through these. It's also worth mentioning that, according to Jeff Easterling, the concept of Anvil Station itself is canon. There's simply just not enough details to say for sure what other aspects of Halo Online are actually canon. The armors being added to MCC helps confirm a ton of new interesting details regarding Anvil Station and helps canonize it beyond a simple tweet or blog post. Let's get started with the first set of new armor, which technically isn't new, but just new to Halo 3, Air Assault. Its description reads, a favorite of Spartans tasked with assisting Anvil Station security personnel. 
Here's our first mention of this mysterious anvil station. There's not much information to be gleaned from this one, except for confirmation that a place called Anvil Station exists. My mind instantly goes to the idea that this is some form of space station, not unlike Cairo Station, for example. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean it's a space station. It's possible that this is a planetary, ground-based location, but I sincerely doubt that. If we're canonizing armor from Halo Online, then there are other elements from the project that could potentially be introduced into canon as well. And according to Halo Online, Anvil Station is definitely a space station. So for now, I think it's safe to assume that Anvil Station is in fact a space station. Next up is Suture. Spartan Combat Medics and Specialized Mjolnir are a new experiment series approved for Anvil testing. Here we have yet another mention of Anvil Station. Though not surprising, it is interesting to note that Spartans have their own dedicated Spartan field medics. Next up is Soldier, which, like Air Assault, isn't technically a new armor set. It's just new to Halo 3. Anvil Station testing has proven this is one of the Mjolnir platform's most versatile variants. More Anvil. It's also worth mentioning that the Soldier armor is a Gen 2 Mjolnir variant, meaning it was specifically designed for Spartan 4s. It's possible that this was secretly developed beforehand for Gen 1, or developed for it retroactively, but I really don't think that's the case here. I believe this sort of confirms these new armors were all engineered for Spartan 4s. The Aviator armor set is employed by Interceptor Squadrons assigned to Anvil Station. More mentions of Anvil Station. This one specifically references Interceptor Squadrons. This doesn't have to mean space-based ships, but that seems to be the implication. The Warrior Armor Set's description reads, Even mainline armor kits can benefit from evaluation in Anvil training courses. Once again, the Warrior Armor was created for Gen 2 Mjolnir armor systems, so this seems like more evidence that these new sets are, again, designed for Spartan 4s. According to Navigator's description, specific technologies being worked on for Mark 7 have found their way into Anvil prototypes for focused evaluation. This seems to imply that Mark 7 already exists and that experimental technologies are being tested at Anvil Station for eventual Mark 7 implementation. The Compass Armor Set is where things start to get really interesting. According to its description, it contains experimental multi-band sensory receptors produced aboard Anvil Station by Swords of Sanghelios Artisan Armorers. This obviously isn't the first instance of the UNSC working alongside the Swords of Sanghelios, but it does confirm that elites are actually collaborating on technology for Spartans with the UNSC on Anvil Station, interspecies technological innovation. This isn't the first instance of elites creating Spartan armor, but I always find the interspecies relations to be awesome. As I touched on before, the existence of the Swords of Sanghelios is yet another indication we're talking about armor that's being developed for Spartan 4s. All right. Given all the evidence, I think at this point it's safe to assume that all of these armors are being produced for and tested by Spartan 4s. Tanker is yet another example of this, as its description features more UNSC Swords of Sanghelios collaboration. Even the Sanghili aboard Anvil Station are impressed with the resilience of this human harness. Now that we've gotten through the less interesting armor sets, we can start to get into the more juicy stuff. So go ahead and put on your tinfoil hat for a second because we're gonna do a little bit of speculation. The Dead Eye Armor Set's description states, cross-training with Sanghili Rangers on Anvil Station will improve the suit's stealth capabilities. This confirms that the elites aboard Anvil Station aren't just collaborating on technology, but they're also training with Spartans. At this point, we've already established that these armors are most likely all designed for Spartan 4s. So if Spartan 4s and elites are training together, does that imply they're training using war games simulations together? I'd say yes. In case you didn't know, every multiplayer match you play, at least in Halo 4 and 5, is a war games simulation. That means that your terrible KD is actually canon. Yes, the UNSC wants their money back for wasting resources on you. Anyways, if elites are indeed training in war games alongside Spartans, then there's no reason whatsoever that Halo 3's multiplayer couldn't be considered canon, as well as 4 and 5's. Now, that could simply mean that 343 is simply canonizing Halo 3 multiplayer, or it could mean they're hinting at a future where Spartans and Elites train together in war game simulations. Which therefore means playable Elites in Halo multiplayer, as well as Halo Infinite multiplayer, is 100% possible in-universe. 
At this point, you might be thinking, what on earth led you to that conclusion? Well, in 2015, 343 released one of their typical cannon fodder info drops, where they answer questions and dissect more obscure elements of Halo's lore. One of the things they mentioned was an Anvil initiative. Here's the excerpt from that article. It starts off with a question from someone named Detenz, asking, do any of Thel's elites participate alongside Spartans in war games for training? In case you weren't aware, Thel is the first name of everyone's favorite Arbiter. At which point, 343's own Grim Brother 1 then replied, saying, There are healthy military relationships stretching back to 2553. Classified records associated with the Anvil Initiative indicate a number of very select joint training engagements. I think it's safe to say that the Anvil Initiative has something to do with Anvil Station, which therefore means that Anvil Station not only conducts war game simulations, but it allows both Spartans and Sangheili to participate in them. So here's where the Halo Infinite theory of mine sort of comes in. What if Halo Infinite's multiplayer takes place on Anvil Station? It would be the perfect way for them to justify playable elites in Halo Infinite's multiplayer. I would even guess that the recent Spartan and weapon renders that 343 released in their Inside Infinite December 2020 article were inside Anvil Station, not Infinity. I have no way to confirm or deny that, it's just my gut feeling since they've released the new armors. There's a link to that cannon fodder in the description if you're interested. This would give 343 the perfect in-universe explanation for playable elites in Halo Infinite's multiplayer. So, if anyone from 343 is watching this and this isn't something you've already considered, there's still time. Bring back playable elites in Halo Infinite. While we're speculating, maybe the space station recently featured in the Halo Infinite Become trailer is in fact Anvil Station. I have no evidence to support this, but I have to admit that would be pretty cool. But we're not finished yet. There's still a few descriptions to go over that aren't related to the Sangheili, some of which are very interesting. I just thought I'd get that out of the way first. Next up is Demo, a prototype Mjolnir suit tested at Anvil Station on behalf of unidentified third parties. Who are the unidentified third parties? I have no idea. Pioneer's description states, Acheron Security hopes that Anvil testing will prove out improvements made after the suit's use on Installation 03. This implies that Spartan 4s have been to Installation 03, aka Delta Halo. Yes, the ring from Halo 2, the one that had tons of flood activity on it at one point. What does this mean exactly? Well, I'm not entirely sure, but it is interesting to know that Spartans have been sent back by the UNSC to Installation 03. Is it possible that there's still flood left over from the conflict during Halo 2? Most likely, but we can't say for sure. I really, really hope this is something that they explore in future Halo media, if it doesn't have something to do with Halo Infinite. The last armor set I wanna talk about is called Hive Mind. By the name alone, you can probably get an idea of what this is about. Anvil Station is the ideal equipment testing environment for Spartans tasked with eliminating localized flood infestations. So, Spartan 4s tasked with killing Flood. That's certainly new. This implies that there's more Flood infestations known by the UNSC, most likely not related to the Flood scene in the Halo Wars 2 expansion, Awakening the Nightmare. To me, this is the most interesting of all the descriptions, as it seems to imply that there's been more recent Flood activity. The only Spartans that have even come in contact with the Flood are the Chief and the members of Red Team on the Spirit of Fire. So what does this mean? Does this mean we'll see Flood in Halo Infinite? One can hope. One can hope. Granted, this isn't the first mention of Flood in an armor's description, but it's still very interesting that 343 continues to reference this. I can't help but feel like there could be more too. Thanks so much for watching. What do you think the description of these new armor sets mean? Let me know in the comment section below. If you really liked this video, it would mean a great deal to me if you shared it, liked it, and subscribed. And while you're at it, go ahead and click that bell too. It'll notify you when I post any new videos. And I do actually have some future stuff planned, similar to what we've got right here, some Halo and some not Halo related. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.